pleasure to be here. So what I wanted to do uh, today is uh, present some resources for Open Seas users. So uh, this is not, you know, intended to be any kind of training or anything. Uh, I'll just kind of, it's more of an informational thing and, you know, give a lot of links to where you can find uh, different uh, information uh, on Open Seas. Okay, so kind of a, an outline for the presentation. I'll just do a brief history of Open Seas, uh, discuss some of the modeling capabilities, and then uh, how to use Open Seas, uh, and then a very simple example analysis, and then list out some online resources, and then just uh, give a summary and con concluding remarks uh, for the the talk. Okay, so. Um, Open Seas began out of the PhD dissertation of Frank McKenna uh, at UC Berkeley. Uh, he uh, published his dissertation in 1997. And in that same year, the Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center, or PEER, uh, began, uh, headquartered at UC Berkeley as well. And uh, Fra Frank's dissertation uh, and the uh, object-oriented parallel computing architecture that he developed uh, was uh, selected or uh, kind of right place, right time uh, to be used uh, within PEER as the simulation platform uh, for performance-based uh, earthquake engineering. Okay. So uh, Open Seas was initially named G3, and that was the, the group designation within PEER uh, for simulation and uh, testbed model uh, development. Okay, and then the name was changed to Open Seas in 2000. Okay, uh, but Open Seas is mostly written in C++, uh, and it calls some Fortran libraries for equation solving. Okay, and just a note on the capitalization of Open Seas: uh, it's uh, uh, lowercase e e s. All right, and that's due to the uh, Tickle uh, scripting language, which Open Seas was uh, initially developed. Uh, or linked with uh, the tool command language, which is capitalized lower C, lowercase c, lowercase l, not all caps, TCL. So Open Seas is an open source uh, platform, which means you know users can make changes and improve the code. Okay, it's you know free to use for research and educational use. Uh, to incorporate Open Seas within commercial software requires a license. Okay, so. Uh, open source doesn't mean do whatever you want with it for whatever purpose, right? But, you know, for commercial purposes, uh, a license is required, okay? And the, the link is there, uh, and, uh, and it just kind of pasted in the, the copyright there. Okay, but, you know, for research and education, free to use, uh, and anybody can uh, make changes and improve the code. Okay, so in terms of source control, right, uh, the first, you know, when G3 and OpenSeas first started, right, it was all the source control was on a zip disk, iOmega uh, zip disk, like shown here. All right. Uh, then we moved to uh, concurrent version systems, uh, CVS, and then after that, uh, SVN. Uh, those are two source control uh, mechanisms back in the early. Uh, to mid 2000s, and then uh, now uh, the source code is available on GitHub. All right, it's, and here's the link. All right, GitHub.com open seas, open seas, and there you can see you know current issues with the code. You can also you know if you do decide to make uh, new models or contributions, uh, you can make pull requests. Uh, in terms of modeling capabilities, there's a lot of models uh, within OpenSeas. Um, what it's probably best known for are the material and geometric nonlinear frame elements. All right, so you know things like fiber sections, a lot of uniaxial force deformation relationships, like for springs. All right, uh, so there's a lot of models for soil structure interaction. Uh, it's also you know, standard like solid finite elements like quads, bricks, shells, plates, you know, that's all uh, within open seas as well. And then there's also capabilities for thermomechanical analysis, like with fire, uh, like fire following earthquake or just fire uh, in general. 
as well as fluid structure interaction uh, using the, the particle finite element method. All right. And then over here on the right is just kind of a, an image from uh, Sylvia's brainery, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, you know, showing, you know, different types of models that you can do in open seas, right? So you can do, you know, full 3D type building models, soil, this is a, a bridge down here, and you can do, you know, soil uh, structure interaction with solid elements, okay, uh, fiber discretization so section here, all right, or, you know, even simple, you know, mass on a stick type models, spring models, all right, you know, frame element, you know, 2D, looks you know, like a moment frame or something there, and then also, you know, some, some more detailed finite element uh, uh, analyses shown there, okay? Okay, so uh, I kind of mentioned Tickle uh, already, all right, but that's one of the two scripting languages you can use uh, with OpenSeas, all right? So uh, Tickle's, you know, a very powerful scripting language, but it can be difficult to learn, all right? And there's limited modules for, like, plotting uh, and post-processing uh, your results, all right? But you can obtain the uh, Windows and Mac versions of OpenSeas Tickle or just OpenSeas.exe uh, from this uh, link over here, OpenSeas.berkeley.edu, blah, 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 user download. Okay. <clears throat> but, you know, Windows, really the latest version is 3.3.0, Mac version also available for download. And if you're using Linux, uh, you'll need to you know, compile your own uh, Tickle version uh, on whatever flavor of Linux you have, okay? And I won't go into those uh, details uh, today. Uh, and then a few years ago, uh, Dr. Menji Zhu here at Oregon State University developed a Python package uh, for OpenSeas that you can, allows you to load uh, OpenSeas, you know, directly alongside NumPy, Matplotlib, and the million other uh, Python packages that are uh, available. Okay, and then installing OpenSeas Pi, right, the Python version of OpenSeas is a very simple pip install, all right, so it's available at PyPy, all right, so 3.3.0, you know, same version as the uh, executable, uh, but, you know, just simply, you know, pip install OpenSeas Pi into your environment. If you're using Anaconda or uh, Python.org or whatever the case may be, all right, this is a very uh, easy way to install uh, OpenSeas Pi. Okay. So you know, really, there's there's three options for using OpenSeas. All right, one which is uh, lesser known, which is to uh, compile a C++ main function. All right, as shown uh, over here. All right, so define a, a main function, and then just create objects. You know that are uh, available within OpenSeas and, you know, manually set everything. Like here's, you know, defining a domain and then defining nodes and then adding those nodes to the domain. You know, it's a lot, a lot of lines of, of source code. All right, so these, you know, main functions are difficult to develop. Very few people do them. All right. uh, but, you know, it, it runs very fast because it's, you know, in, you know, native uh, C++. And then the other two options are, you know, much more, uh, popular and user friendly, and that's you know one to write tickle scripts, all right, which I've kind of shown uh, the equivalent code uh, uh, over here in the lower right, all right. But we, you know, just create nodes with commands, you know, give it a tag, coordinates, you know, just like you see over here in the C++. All right, so you know underneath the tickle uh, script, you know, all the all of this stuff up here from the C++ code is happening like under the under the hood uh, so to speak okay and then you know also you know you can write a python script right uh, with equivalent commands to what you have in OpenSeas tickle right uh, again you know all the, the magic and conversions happen uh, underneath uh, where you know we you know just say node one and then give coordinates and then you know this code is called or code like this is called uh, underneath the, the Python uh, interpreter okay but you know the, the syntax between 
Tickle and Python, or the, the format uh, of the commands for OpenSeas, I should say, uh, between Tickle and Python are very uh, similar. Okay. Although the two languages themselves, uh, Tickle and Python, are very different. Okay, so in terms of you know documentation and uh, support, you know there's a lot there's a lot of resources out there, uh, some better than others. All right, uh, you know, g googling things uh, sometimes works, uh, but you'll when you do so, you often end up at one of these places. Right, uh, so there's the uh, Open Seas Wiki pages, which uh, mainly has tickle examples. Uh, he here's the wiki page, all right, uh, and then you know here is the OpenSeas Pi documentation page, all right. There's also uh, a uh, the OpenSeas documentation is slowly moving to GitHub, all right, all right at this link uh, shown here. Okay, uh, Open Seas documentation. So eventually, all the wiki pages and the Open Seas Pi doc uh, will will be at this site. Uh, Frank and I are working on that uh, very slowly. All right, but then there's also a, a message board uh, where you can post questions. All right, Open Seas Berkeley Edu. Okay, so all right with you know. Uh, different topic areas, uh, but there's a lot of spam in this uh, message board, so you have to be aware of that. All right, there's also an active group on Facebook where people post questions and uh, get answers uh, as well. Okay, and that link is uh, provided here. Okay, so uh, and then you know, like I mentioned a minute ago, uh, you know, Googling. Will give you answers. Uh, not always good answers, but uh, so sometimes uh, they're good. But you know, usually you'll end up in one of these places. All right. Okay. So there's a few different tools for uh, pre and post processors with OpenSeas. So uh, you know, again, you know, just you know, seeing the connectivity alone is you know enough to you know track down some uh, some errors, modeling errors. But you know, there's OpenSeas Navigator, uh, which I believe is built. Uh, into MATLAB in some way. Okay, there's also ECs, uh, which is a graphical user interface uh, for scripting uh, within OpenSeas. And then there's STKO, which is a the scientific toolkit for OpenSeas. Okay, these ECs and STKO are both uh, you know, uh, commercial uh, products. Uh, OpenSeas Navigator is free. I don't. Not sure it's really being maintained uh, anymore. Okay, and then uh, GID plus OpenSeas is a uh, front end for uh, you know, mostly for solid finite element analysis, but I believe you can do you know general uh, OpenSeas frame models and, and everything else. Okay, and of course you know Google searching will turn up other uh, pre and post processors. All right, but you know if you need to see the model, right then. Uh, you know, one of these tools is uh, very good. Uh, also, within OpenSeas Pi, uh, there's some visualization modules. Yeah, so here's the OpenSeas Pi documentation, this uh, pre-processing uh, commands. There's some meshing, some basic meshing, post-processing. There's a couple of uh, modules within OpenSeas Pi uh, to, to render the model and to, to visualize the model. Okay. Again, very, it all uses matplotlib, but it's you know, uh, very effective in uh, looking at the model. Some other online uh, resources, you know, it's a, is, is is shown here. Uh, one of which is uh, Sylvia's Brainery, all right, where there's a lot of online uh, content uh, for Open Seas and basically a, a community of Open Seas users and developers. Okay. There's you know examples uh, using Tickle and Python, as well as some self-paced Open Seas courses. Uh, some of which are free, some are uh, cost a nominal amount. Okay, uh, you know, ma maintaining Open Seas is not uh, uh, yeah not not a effortless uh, thing, right? Uh, so 
there's also Open Seas uh, Cafe held uh, online every week, and then uh, also uh, Dr. Mazzoni has a, a YouTube channel uh, with a lot of uh, videos, like like it's shown here. You know how to download, install, and run Open Seas, uh, Open Seas Realm. You know this this is the image I lifted uh, a few slides ago, right? To uh, and she explains all the different components uh, within the uh, within Open Seas, and then there's many other videos uh, showing how to you know helping you learn uh, Open Seas. Okay. Okay. Also, uh, a blog about Open Seas and nonlinear structural analysis uh, is available. Uh, has you know, Python examples, sometimes different modeling challenges for people to to do, all right, and then kind of compare results and see how uh, what variance there is in uh, uh, different structural models, all right, uh, and then you know summaries of new developments in Open Seas, and then even some some history and and backstories uh, on Open Seas. Uh, a lot of fun to to write. Uh, these posts and uh, you know kind of give background on on open seas. Okay, so um, kind of concluding remarks. All right, so uh, open seas has a steep learning curve. All right, it, it can feel like a like a black box. Right, um, and a lot of that's because you know open seas gives you full control uh, of your model uh, and the analysis. Okay. So it may seem intimidating at first, uh, but the more you get used to it, uh, you know, the better uh, or more comfortable uh, you'll feel, right? So, but you know, you have to take the time to understand what you're modeling. So, you know, Open Seas is free, so you could say, you know, you get what you pay for, right? Uh, but I, I don't want to look at it that way, right? Uh, really, it's you know, you get what you put into it, right? So if you take the time to, you know. Uh, learn open seas learn some of the the theory you know with the online resources you know it'll you'll you'll get a lot out of it okay and of course you know resources are available uh if you need help all right and uh, the open seas community continues to grow uh and it's you know been a pleasure to uh, uh see the the growth of the community in the last uh, you know 20 plus years uh and i